Saturday, 9th of January. Still holiday hangover mode, it looks like, at the post offices. I'm a little tired this morning. I uh, tried to stay awake to watch my alma mater, Michigan State, basketball last night. I was up till 2. I watched till halftime. We were up by 17. And what do you know? When I woke up this morning, <laughs> looks like we the other team came back and we lost by 1. <laughs> Receiving receiving packages in different countries when you don't speak the language fully It was a challenge for me for a long time until I kind of figured out the system got everything down Google translates a huge help. I've been waiting for these packages for a couple packages for more than two and a half weeks and when I foul I spend just ridiculous amounts of time Looking on the internet following the packages tracking tracking them knowing when I actually have to be home and they were supposed to arrive yesterday, but they didn't until I went outside late at night at 10 p.m. and I saw this on my window. So I gotta go pick those wines up today. And luckily they're open on Saturday morning, but at first it was a beautiful morning, but now it's snowing. It's gonna be a little cold. I'm just hoping there's not a super long line in the post office. So life has changed for a lot of us this year, me as well, so yeah, you, instead of being able to travel full time, which is something I miss, when you're tasting wine at home, you can taste it over a few hours or over a few days to see how the wines change, but this whole time showed me how much uh, wine, like a lot of other, other industries are built on connections with people. It's nothing like being there in the cellar talking to some people that have the hands in the dirt, uh, seeing the beautiful landscapes. That's what makes, that's what's drawn me to wine. That's what makes it magical for me. So I'm looking forward to 2021, hopefully returning somewhat to the norm. Uh, line like expected. Yes. Over done? A tree packet. <clears throat> so two or three packages arrived I was expecting. The third one still two weeks later I haven't gotten. I got a good 25 kilos, uh, about 55 pounds uh, of wine to drag back. Luckily it's less than a kilometer away. Just taking a little break. Now I suspect that uh, the delivery man just saw that it was on the sixth floor and maybe he didn't want to carry all the way up six floors even though there's a lift in our apartment. Actually, I'm kind of glad that only two of the boxes arrived because if the third one arrived, I don't think that I'd be able to carry all of them and shoot this video. Whew, doggy. So I got my workout in for the day. I think it was about 25, 30 kilos. So we're talking about 55, 60 pounds, maybe even more over uh, a kilometer, left a little bit, uh, a little more than a half mile. I think in CrossFit terms, they call that a farmer's carry or a fireman carry. Good thing I wasn't timed because I probably would have failed. So let's see what we got here. Mulet and Garish Kaberta, this is a brand new producer for me. Uh, he reached out one to see if I could send a couple wines. I think he sent a couple vintages. Nice. Nice. One of my favorite producers in all of Slovenia, Mlelchnik, uh, was one of the guys that really started the, the amber wine, orange wine revolution over there in, uh, right on the border of Colio, Italy, along with Gravner and Radicon. Excellent. This is a producer to check out. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching uh, me struggle carry some of those wines and stay tuned to our YouTube channel for more exciting stuff. Check out our website, Exotic Wine Travel. I'll be doing a lot of articles on Slovenian wine. I'm tired. I'm going to rest. I will see you soon. Hello, thanks for watching. Hey, you made it to the end. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell so you know when new videos are out. If you like content like this, check out our Patreon page where you get some behind the scenes exclusive content. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.